Yo, what's up guys to another skill specialization showcase. This time we are doing it for the dagger. We will go over all the skill specializations. I will also give you in-depth information on new rotations that are being made possible. And if you like this kind of video yesterday, I already dropped the same for crossbow. And for the following days, I will drop one new weapon each day. So now let's take a look at the first skill. And that one is not Predatory Strike, this is actually now Cleaving Moonlight. So the old Predatory Strike did get removed and replaced. This is now an AoE attack. I will show you what it looks like in-game. Just clean without anything of the new things. You see it's an AoE attack, we are also damaging the dummy right next to us. And it looks like a little wheel, a little bit like Sonic the Hedgehog is rolling around. The first one is called Consecutive Use which just allows you to use it again a second time. Well, easy math here, no? double the damage, so why not? And then we are being introduced to a new weakening that's um, available on the dagger. And this is decrease in endurance. Maybe one X course of what endurance does. Basically, if you attack someone with a high endurance, you will not crit. And not critting means that from your weapon here, you will not get the highest roll. So here I would not get the 115, I would get like the 27. And for some classes, especially crossbow dagger, this is like really fatal. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. This Thunderlord could serve like an enormous purpose in being able to burst down the enemies with crit. Then we also have the option to increase the attack speed while the consecutive use is activated. So here we are saying that um, we need 3 seconds to be able to reactivate it again. In some rotations it would be like you choose this, you just double click it so you have the damage done. But you can squeeze out more DPS if you are actually activating it doing something else to utilize the 15% speed and then last second you're doing the second hit on this. So this will allow for some variations. And then instead of the Thunderlords, we could also make it deal more damage to poison enemies that are we are like, for example getting with Inject Venom. So let's take a look at the Thunderlords first. So as you're seeing here, we are applying six to seven stacks it does vary a little i know we know we got eight so it, it's like six seven eight somewhere in that in that ballpark and it actually lasts longer the stacks the cooldown of the spell so just by using that one here without having to go um thunder lords into anything else you're already able to stack it to 20 on an enemy so i think this specialization here will be the strongest thunder lords application that you can get and also like for poison it's just extra damage i don't think we need to look at that then inject venom i think we all know it um we're getting a poison a debuff onto the, the enemy which is also decreasing the health region by the enemy and you're dealing damage on top and this poison could also be exchanged for thunderlords for example you can do the mana cost rate decrease you can decrease the cooldown itself and you can increase the poison or the thunderlords no matter what you're doing this would be like the normal poison we are getting our stacks and then we are ticking with the damage right here so if we are getting it to thunderlords it will also change the thing but you will see now that um, we are getting the thunderlord stacks while attacking it took longer to apply it this way is with like clean auto attacks than if we are going for the um for the cleaving moonlight so this is why i think this will not be good so you can keep poison up with inject venom the whole time and you can get thunder lords running if you're doing it like this so basically you go like this and now you can stack both before it comes up you can continue and you're going to push it all the way it's way more effective doing it that way then transforming the inject venom into the thunder. Then next up, we are having the vampiric strike, which is basically a life steal skill that is dealing damage, and 16% of the damage you're dealing, you're gaining back as health. You can do that um, so it does more damage, and you can also increase it 
So it's going up to 31%. Let me just showcase that quickly. You need to be always in range. You will see if you're off range, the skill is sprayed out. As soon as you're in range, the skill is ready. And now you can see it's just like a little foo -foo -foo, and that's it. But let's take a look now at the Umbral Spirit. The Umbral Spirit is like a self buff and every melee critical hit you are doing in the six seconds it's last, you will deal additional damage with it. You can do that as well to have um, like additional damage against the Thunderbolts, for example, or you can proc it to have additional damage against poison or you can just increase the duration. So let's take a look what it looks like like this and then um, I'm going to show you the poison version as well. So it's just a one quick burst. And this one here is the poison version. Then next up we are having the stealth mechanism, the camouflage cloak that allows you to go into stealth for 8.5 seconds. And here you're having the option that when you are using it, you are immune to CC which makes this a whole new level of engage. At the moment, when you, if you go out of engage and you're not landing a CC right away, in trouble and CC chained, and this will basically allow you to not have like a CC issue at the start and give a high chance that you're getting out the burst in the three seconds. And then if you have like, for example, a tavern one, you might be already back in camouflage again. So this one is really interesting to dive consistently. Then we're having a cooldown decrease, yeah, not that important, and a duration increase. Here it's, it's important to note that you can only choose either one of them, you cannot choose both. And I think a cooldown decrease is like way better than the duration. And as you can see right here, this is how it works. You will go into stealth. And one thing that is important, the first thing that you're doing after stealth is a guaranteed critical hit. So use the first skill when you're coming out of stealth wisely. Next up, we are having the Phantom Smoke Screen. This is a, I would say, a protection skill that you can use in mass PvP to protect your party. It will summon a smoke screen and everyone in the smoke screen will evade magic and range projectiles. You can also make it so it goes against melee with an addition. And you can increase the duration from three to four seconds. Let me just showcase that. This is the smoke screen. Everyone in here would now be um, immune to the range, magic, and with the addition also melee ones. This gives, for example, in mass PvP, time for healers to wreck you up. Now we are coming to my favorite skill, and that one is Shadow Strike. And that skill got even better. Like, it is a charge onto something which i think is already really good but then it actually has a bind in it and a silence as well so charge two second bind four second silence that's just amazing and then now it gets even better you can cast it and if you cast it again you have six seconds time you can go back so you can go in attack an enemy assassinate it and just go back to your to your safer location and if the safe location would have not already been good enough, you can also now increase the range of the dash by 40%. So when you're going back out of it, you will be in an even deeper safe state. You can increase the bind or you can also apply Thunderbolts. But this one is really bad because it only applies one, one stack. I will show you. Let, let's take a look on the range. So let's walk out. And now when we're walking in, we are slowly seeing that now it's already back up. Did you see that range? Like 16.6 meters, like it's fucking crazy. And now when we're going, we're only applying one stack of thunder, like you can see. We can burst here, we can do whatever, and then we just go back and back in safety. Like This will be in every dagger kit, like that's so fucking overpowered. I cannot take any build serious that is um, not taking those two skill specializations for the Shadow Escape there. Now let's take a look at Brutal Incision. Brutal Incision was like that heavy burst spell that um, you were always trying to do on enemies that were 50% health or less, because then you would get higher critical hit rate. So the endurance that enemies are stacking is not that important. And you would get critical damage, which is a really rare stat and it's basically a straight damage multiplier. And this now has the option to um, deal additional damage 
if the enemy is um, is weakened by thunderclouds, you will reduce the base damage. So if you're not you so if you're not able to stack the thunderclouds and you use it, it will deal less damage. So you're really relying to actually hit your rotation there, or you can do it so it's like flat poison damage increase, um, like we have discussed before. I said that it's harder to pull off the thunderclouds, but if you are able to pull it off, you will actually get rewarded because you will get 30% um, less cooldown on your spell to so use it again, which is a massive DPS burst. So the thunderclouds bombing in uh, uh, into cooldown, yeah. If you are able to use it and stack the thunderbolts reliantly, is the highest DPS, the most uh, reliant one for damage that doesn't require too much setup would be like the poison version. Let me show you the thunderbolt one first. That one is the, the thunderbolt. Now, if we are stacking our poison here onto the enemy and we are using it. You will see bam extra damage knife throwing is throwing five daggers into a direction reducing move speed and reducing incoming here so it's really important to get down tanks for example and you can increase this not only giving you those two debuffs but also decreasing the endurance of an enemy you can decrease the cooldown you can increase the effect duration on you can increase the number of soaps this is like the the way we're just gonna um, pop all of them in and I will show you what it looks like because it's actually really cool now from the skill design. Look at that. Bam. Like it looks like um, like multi-shot. Like everywhere. Two, 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 two. Then we are having next ankle strike. This one is a follow-up skill that you would usually use after shadow escape because you would get the bind from shadow escape and then you would trigger the prone collision effect from ankle strike to keep the chain going. And now you have the option to apply movement speed decrease, which is completely irrelevant. Never use that, trust me. But this one here is really good. Offhand weapon activation is increased by 30%. I want to show you a combo quickly. So you want to do it like your dive, right? So you will go like this, ankle strike, and then brutal incision, and then you can go back out again. This is not the full potential yet. If you are looking at it, and we are want to utilize that 30% offhand weapon activation rate. Yeah, this is really important. We want to utilize that. And the cleaving has an effect that offhand weapon activation deals damage four times. And we have that double stacked. So the rotation would be you're going into poison, then you jump in, you go with your ankle, then you go double double, and then you follow it up with a brutal incision and then you go back out. This will give a really, really high burst. And this can also be like combined with crossbow skills to do even more bursts. So this combination here with the cleaving moon, the double usage, the additional damage on the offhand weapon activation will be really, really burst. Fatal Stigma is similar to like the mortal mark on crossbow. It is a mark that is being set on the enemy and it will deal like a certain amount of damage and reduce the healing. So it's also like helpful to kill tanks. Now you're able to do it in an area damage. You can get a cooldown if that target, where is it on, is actually resetting. That's really strong for PvE because there you can trigger that purposely 100% success chance every time once you get used to it. You can increase the range so it's not like a melee, so it's more like a range version. And um, you can increase the damage based on the amount of HP that is already lost which makes the cooldown reset here triggerable a lot more reliant. So you can see right here, this is the max range at which I can use it. Compared to melee range, it's really far away. And now the marker is set, and then afterwards it will explode for the AoE. Last up, we are having the Frenzied Sword Dance. The Frenzied Sword Dance is basically like an AoE attack, where you're dashing around enemies, while you're doing that, you're mostly untargetable. Instead of this being an AoE attack, you now also have the option to do it in a 1v1 attack. You can also use it to apply thunderclouds and you can decrease the cooldown. But let me show you the AoE version first so you understand what I mean. So once we are in range, we can press it and you see we are like doing an AoE. We're just jumping around to random targets, but we are landing on the target that we are starting. If we are going for a mad sword dance, we are able to deal more single target damage. As you can see right here, 
all the attacks are now done on a single target. Yeah guys, this is it about the dagger, everything you need to know. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I will answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers guys.